I wanted to start off with when you were drafted 2016 second round. What did you know about the Cincinnati Bengals at that point when you were drafted? And um, did you know anything about their playoff history at that point in your career? Uh, the first thing I thought about uh, when I got drafted, what I, I, I felt and knew that I was going to an elite team, you know, with AJ, Andy, and and, and Gino and all those guys, you know, because they were just coming off a of playoff season. So me entering is like I got to fulfill footsteps because some guys left out, but we still got all the main players. So I just felt like I just had to come in and do my job to to continue that that streak, you know. But um, unfortunately, it didn't go that way because we had to deal with a lot of injuries the last few years I was a part of. So. Um, and then other the other thing was the Mike Brown history. You know, I knew uh, he 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 started the, the Browns, and now he's with the Bengals, and and now and, and I knew about the, the that legacy as well. Okay, so you knew about the Brown family history, yeah. and you did know about the playoff drought that they had been in when you came into the locker room. Yeah, I had knew they had because they had went went what three years before, prior to me getting drafted. So I knew. Five. I, 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 yeah, yeah, my bad. Five, but um, no, you're good. Yeah, but I knew they just haven't won a game, but they keep getting there, keep getting there. So I just kept feeling like it's just one of these years is just one of the, one missing piece going to come in and it's going to be be uh, that right moment for, for us to win a game. I talked to a couple of the coaches who were on staff when you were drafted and I asked them um, why they chose you to be a part of the roster. And they had just kind of mentioned that you fit the bill for the exact kind of player that the, the franchise liked as far as hardworking and able to do things that were unexpected and just a blue collar type of worker. Um, have you been like that all throughout your college days, too, or did you just step it up a notch in the NFL? Yeah, no, I think I think I was just kind of already prepared for that because I, I came from a small school where we won four state championships in a row, you know, and I knew how to lead a team and I knew how to uh, carry carry people and, and keep them on the right track and to wanting to maintain their their, their same goal as, as I did, which was our team goal. And that was to win a championship, you know, and just just having a guy like me, you know, I, I, I'm very good at implementing that that goal and continue to keep guys up to, to just keep letting them know like yo we got to keep going you know these weeks start to stack up and get long we may lose and may feel like it's over but you know I, th- I think I, I'm a guy that that that, that motivates and, and and that's a that's a um that's a, that's a guy that's going to bring 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 the camaraderie I feel like your career with the Bengals has been an interesting one because for so many years you had to deal with losing seasons and deal with adversity injuries all that stuff and um, it seems like you just kept showing up, kept working hard, um, kept persevering through all of that. And now you're an AFC North champion and you're in the playoffs. How sweet does that feel to see all of your hard work throughout the years come to fruition? Uh, it, 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 feel, it feels great for me, you know, because like you said, I, I didn't been through the thick and thin of this, man. I've been through part <laughs> of teams where we won two games, eight games, seven games, but never really got over to that extra win another two games to get into the playoffs, you know. And going back off what I said of how much I work, no matter what the circumstance is, if we are, if we'd have been out of the playoffs, I would wanted to play this last game or whatever the case may be, uh, just 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 because that's me and and I love to play football, you know. But now that I stuck it out and I wrote it out with the team that I started with, and actually helping them and 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 uh, bringing all the other guys on board to get in where we wanted to get to. I know for me for six years, then I mean it's special for me. This, this is probably one of the most special moments that I had. In, 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 in a while now, you know, but um, I'm, I'm going to just continue to cherish it and, and just try to reach more goals. What was, I, I know that I read that you and um, Joe Mixon were the last to leave the locker room on Sunday. What kind of conversations did you guys both have? Because I remember having conversations with Joe um, a few years ago where he's like, I just want to experience a winning season. And now you yeah. finally are. What were those conversations kind of like? I mean, it was just, it was just the locker room was just filled with joy. You know, it was just, it was just fun to just, just, just to be around the guys. You know, and for me and Mixon, it was kind of understood at the time that we were the longest, well, two of the longest uh, guys playing, and and we both know because uh, we've been here the longest. So we just, we 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 kind of got that chemistry with one another that. I just want to be around you, bro. Like I, I care for you. Like we got we got a great relationship, you know, outside of football as well. And to just see a guy uh like him still here being with me, you know, because it's the the whole atmosphere is different now. You know, it's not the people I didn't see coming in when I first came in, you know. So all the guys that still here with me from when I started, you know, it's it's a different meaning. 
And do you remember what kind of cigars you guys were enjoying after that win? Nah, I couldn't even remember. <laughs> you couldn't all even tell me the name, could you? Couldn't even tell you. We just sparked them up because I don't really do cigars all like that. But after a game like that, you know, I just they were handing them out. Give me, let me get one, light it up for me. Let me, let me enjoy it. Did you have any kind of special conversation with Joe Burrow or anybody like that after that game? Not really. Just, just, just talking about how we knew we was going to get to this position. You know, with yeah. with. Uh, the, the group of guys that we had, we talked about this from day one. From when Joe first came in, we knew uh, what type of quarterback he was from the moment he stepped in, and we knew he was a, a franchise player and that he was going to be a top five quarterback. You know, that's how we felt. You know, and just after we accomplished uh, a, a small goal and, on, on our way to the Super Bowl, um, it, just, it just hit us. It hit home because everything we started to speak is happening because we're working at it and we're continuing to mention it week by week, you know, so guys don't – uh, hit hit any of the walls when when guys get tired late in the season and not feeling like doing stuff because there's a lot of times when I don't feel like coming in and and practicing but you know I keep the same the the, the same mindset and to continue to just be me. Where does that motivation come from when when it's kind of the dog days or you're exhausted or you're dealing with a lingering injury um, and even in the seasons past when you weren't winning where does that motivation to show up um, come from for you? Uh, just just. Just throughout my legacy, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm a just I'm a I'm a winner, you know, and that's what I came from, and I hate to lose, so that that's what drives me the most, you know, losing and being being the the left stock around the league, you know, and now that we're the most talked about team, well, in terms of in my in, our, in my position room, uh, it, it, it shows how long of a way that I came, you know, especially helping the guys that we have now, and just just for me, just learning through through all my years of, of how hard it is to win a National Football League. And what has that transition been like for you as far – like you come in and you're, you've are you got A.J. Green in the room who already has a big resume, um, and then he's gone, and now you're you're the veteran. You've got these young guys coming in. What has that been like for you? Yeah, um, I think it helped a lot when I had A.J. <clears throat> because I, I just sat back and watched him and, 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 and let him pave the way. And it was kind of it was kind of it was kind of easy for me, you know, with, with a guy like him in the locker room. You know, he's the best – he was the best receiver in – in the, in, the, in the whole league at the point and just just he, he wasn't very vocal but the things that he done is showing you know and just how he carry himself he wasn't going out he don't drink doing any of that but he always works hard you know even days where they try to give him off days he still want to go out there and do some type of work with us so that was just something I, I, I really uh took took the to heart you know because it's a lot of guys around the league that's that's very content you know when they know that they're the best player and they don't want to take off days, but AJ, well, the guys be wanting off days and AJ never wants that, you know, so that kind of touched me, you know, because it showed how much he cared about winning and how much he, he cared about his, about his organization. With all the rest, you know, it was just all a learning process from just just, just, just all, the, all the situations that I've been in, you know, from losing games, from uh, me getting injured and not playing, then to to getting the conscious, just everything played a part. So it, it, it's, it, it's been a great journey. What was the transition like for you when there was a coaching change? Because I know each coach comes in with their own playbook and what they want to do and their own kind of coach's language or playbook language or whatever you want to call it. Um, was that an easy transition for you or did it take you a little bit of time to get used to it? It was kind of easy, but it wasn't. Only, only re reason I say it was easy because when I was at Pitt, I, I dealt with that my whole career. I had three different coaches. I had two different head coaches, three different receivers coaches. So I've been already dealing with that. You know, and <laughs> you were a pro at that point. Yeah, I'm like, man, like, it, but, but but that sucks too. It's, it's not an easy thing to get through because, like you said, you got a you got a whole new offense, whole new philosophy of how the coach want to come in here and 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 plant his 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 uh. His championship mindset and just just uh, of, of just being a bangle so everything changes from the plays to the, the everything how long does it take you know an offense to click when there's a brand new playbook implemented like that um I don't I don't think it takes long you know I just I just feel like it takes all the right players and in, in like the, the the right scheme to just just go out there everybody be all doubt in one, you know, because I feel like the group of guys that we got now, I think we can play in a lot of different offenses in this in this league, you know, and a lot of teams may be not doing too great in them offenses just simply because we have the playmakers and we have the line. We, we just got everything that can, you know, make make things work. Not to say that we don't already got the best offensive playbook, you know, but 
yeah, I just, I just feel like we got a great, a great group of guys. Taking it back a little bit. Did you watch the NFL a lot when you were in college? Like, did you watch the playoffs when you, when you were in college? Yeah, a ton, you know, and, and, and yeah. since I was so, so, so close to, uh, we were so, so close to the Steelers at the time because we kind of the same facility. You know, yeah. we always we always watched them because they will always come in the next day and it, 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 you could feel you, like you could feel the energy off a of playoff win. And just, just just being in Pittsburgh, you just feel it, you know. But at the end of the day, I, I, I wasn't like a diehard Steelers fan, you know, outside of the Bengals in, in the uh, in the, in the Steelers rivalry, you know, because now that I'm here in the Bengals. You know, I want I want to implement that. I want to bring that energy here. I, we, we it's time to, you know, take over the, 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 the division. Did you watch that AFC wild card game back in 2015? I did. It was the implosion. Yeah. <laughs> what was your takeaway? What, what was your memory from that? Uh, I don't really like putting people on the spot, but the you don't have to name thing names. I remember, it's all good. Last thing I remember was when, when Jay Hill fumbled. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was the game. That was it. It yep. hurt. I know it. I, I, could, I could already. I can, I, I can imagine. I, I mean, I can't imagine how the, how that locker room was at that time. It was probably. Whew. It was. It was pretty sad yeah. afterwards. <laughs> no, even then, they were, even then, it was all great players. I thought they had a run because they was what it was fifteen and one, fourteen and two that year. They were twelve and four, but they started yeah, eight and zero. Like so they thought, yeah, yeah. and they were like. There was like double digit numbers of guys who were like key players who were in their contract years at that right. time too. So they knew that everything was going to switch up. So it was like it was super sad when they didn't win against Pittsburgh. It was just like a big implosion. But um, so what went through your mind when you watched that fumble? Man, it's just it's just so much to think about. You know, especially being being a guy in his his shoes. I mean, it's it's very hard, you know, because you work your whole life for that moment. And, and when, and like I like I always say, when, when when my numbers call, I always want to be the guy to fulfill what needs to be done at that moment, you know. And and for him, I, I know it sucked, but for me, I mean, I wasn't really a part of the team yet, so it didn't kind of kind of hit me as 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 it do now. But just just seeing a guy, something like that happen to a great player, like I I feel for him, you know. I, I understand the wrath and what what he could have been going through, but other than that, it was just. It was it was a crazy game. It was it was hard to watch seeing it. Well, and there's there's another shot for your team now and the franchise to finally get over the hump that everyone's been talking about since since I was born, since you were born, since a lot of the players in the locker room were born, since before that time, about finally winning a playoff game, getting over that hump. What would that mean to you as a Bengal, considering everything that you know you've been through? Right, yeah, I think I think it it, it will mean a lot, a lot. You know, it, it haven't won since nineteen ninety one, yep. and I mean, it, it it would mean a lot for the fans, for the players, the coaches, especially for the organization with Mike Brown, because he been here the he been here the longest, obviously. <laughs> and for me, six years, not never seen a playoffs, and you know, I can't even really imagine the feeling of just going out there and playing. You know, so. Um, I think I think it it is it's definitely going to be the biggest thing for the city in all year this whole year. Why did you? I've been wondering this for a long time. Why did you decide to re-sign? Why did you sign an extension with the Cincinnati Bengals? Um, because I I still I still I still believed in the team that we had. You know, we still had a uh, heck of a players, great players, and in, in in that year when when I did after I did sign, uh, we started off that was. 17 or eight that was 18 we started off five and one and then yeah. we played the, we played the Steelers up here and they beat us on the last play of the game and losing to them then and that was the same game we we all start everybody started getting hurt and then we went to the Saints and that, that game was even crazy then the, the it's just it just got bad from there but um yeah I, I I just feel like when when I put when somebody put their trust in me to uh take me in the draft and pick me it, it shows uh, how much they wanted me compared to all other teams. So it, it's kind of hard to just up and leave when I have still have an opportunity to continue to play for the team who who gave me a chance. And you were on so many teams that had so many injuries. I mean, they've been des- the, the Bengals in particular have been decimated by injuries for year after year right. after year. It seems like, and you guys finally have health at the at the perfect time in the season in January. Perfect. What is that like for you, knowing that? 
you know, the, the key playmakers, you included, guys around you are healthy and ready to go in the playoffs. I mean, it, it just gives us even much more confidence of knowing uh, we don't have to uh, overwhelm ourselves or trying to do too much, knowing uh, we don't have guys to fulfill their jobs. You know, so for us, it's just still week by week football. You know, we don't got to uh, think about much more than to just go out there and do our own jobs. So, I mean, it, it gives us so much more confidence. I know you just want to go in and play and you're going to be fine no matter what going in. But how do you not overlook Sunday's game when you know that the playoffs are the week after? For me, I don't think I will, you know, because I, I'm, I'm still ready to play in, in this game if need be. You know, because yeah. like I say, I never, never even got in this predicament. I never was able to uh, be 50 50 in a game to know either if I needed to play or not, you know, because we never was even solidified to be in the playoffs. So um, I know I won't take this game for granted. I still want to beat these guys because of what they did to us before. And I think if we beat these guys with the guys that, that are playing, it's still giving us more momentum, more momentum because. We believe in them guys to come in when guys like us get hurt and to uh, being able to fulfill our jobs and, and, and keep and keep the thing rolling. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're overly confident in, 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 in this week and, and following. Tyler, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate I appreciate you the time. You're awesome. Good sure. luck. I wish appreciate you well. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Bye.